Welcome to Business Unveiled Podcast. This is the place where we help overwhelmed, time-starved entrepreneurs like you make the profitable shifts to get more done and get more out of life. I'm your host, Angela Prophet, award-winning eight-figure entrepreneur and CEO. And in every episode of Business Unveiled, I'm bringing you conversations that will give you the expertise and strategies that will scale your team and business so you can get shit done. That's GSD in our world. So get your time back and grow a business that helps you be present in your life. Let's do this, y'all. Hi, y'all. It's Angela. I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled. I'm so excited for our guest today. We've been like completely chatting offline and I looked up, I'm like, oh, we should start recording now. But she like lives in the world that we have been living in, especially for the past few years, really trying to educate and help consumers understand marketing and strategy and social media and how all of this plays into your business model marketing plan and she lives in this world. So I'm super excited because she's built an amazing community and she has sold a business and started another business and not everyone gets to go through that. And so we get to pick her brain today and learn a little bit about that. So I'm excited. Lindsay, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's so nice to be here. I'm so excited. Me too. We off and start talking about all the things with uh, social media marketing, all the fun stuff. Can you give us a little backstory so that people know what was your backstory? How did you start this incredible community and sell it and start something else? Because I, yeah. I think a lot of people that's kind of their dream, but they don't really know how to get there. So I would love for you to share your backstory. Yeah, of course. So I started my company Bump Club and Beyond when I was pregnant with my first daughter. So it was in 2010. And essentially I knew I wanted support and I wanted community. And I was living in Chicago. I still do. I live in the suburbs of Chicago, but I was living downtown. My husband and I are transplants. We don't have family here. So we really, I needed to find my people because none of my friends at the time were pregnant. However, we all have fifth graders. And so I was just first. So they ended up becoming my customers, which was awesome. Um, but so I started hosting events for expectant moms. So we did a workout, we did a shopping event. And you have to remember that this was before Facebook even had business pages. So I sent an email, I posted it on my Facebook page, I posted it on my LinkedIn. And through word of mouth and people sharing, we ended up having over 50 people come to each of the first events. Wow. They were also yearning for community. There was nowhere to find pregnant friends, but there's everywhere to find mom friends. So it, it was really capturing this woman right before she had her baby. And, and then as I was going through pregnancy, there were all these things that I needed and products and just so much information. And so I legitimately built this business through the lens of my own two eyes. And it was like, what do I need? What do my friends need? And we started having speakers and we started having dinners. And I, I truly found my community, but I also built a business showing up as a pregnant woman authentically every single day, not on social media because there wasn't social media. So it was at my events. It was on my website. It was through emails we were sending out through our blog. And as social media came about, I adapted, I changed, we grew, we started pr providing more content. We began to work with brands such as Target and Nordstrom and Honest Company. They were hiring us to create activations, but the second piece was they were hiring us to create activations and then bring our audience. So mm -hmm. I grew this business to be a seven figure year over year business. Um, we had about 3 million engaged users a month wow. through That's all of our amazing. platforms. I mean, that was like, you know, Facebook webinars, Instagram, our website, there was everything combined email, everything. And eventually I was approached in 2018 and I was approached by three different entities and I sold bump club and beyond to, um, what I felt was the best entity, not just for me, but for the brand and for my team. Mm -hmm. And I spent two and a half years working for the company who bought me. They were a large agency holding company. And then 
other brands started coming to me and asking me to do projects for them. And, you know, I had, I had kind of thought like, I'm going to want to make a change and I'm going to want to move on at some point. I realized that my shelf life as in the parent space was probably waning as my kids are now 11 and eight, I'm not pushing strollers. So it felt very weird for me to say, this is the best stroller that you should use because I wasn't using them anymore. And I felt like, yes, I could do the strategy, but me, myself, I was becoming a little bit irrelevant to my direct community. And through these other offers, you know, I realized I actually can, can do this for other brands and I can help other female founders and I can help other companies do what I did with Bump Club with their, with their own brand. And I made the decision last summer, July of 2021, and I decided to exit. And um, Bump Club became my first client, actually. They became a con- I became a consultant for them so that I could phase out in, in a really easy way. And through that time, I built my website. I made a plan to start my own podcast, and I got a couple of clients. And now I am um, a marketing consultant, and I help other businesses, large and small, as well as solopreneurs to really help them achieve their success, whatever that looks like for them. And a lot of that has to do with content and social media and marketing strategy. And it is probably like one of the most important, I mean, we were just talking about it before, like it's a, it's this tiny piece of like the big picture and the marketing plan. But something that you said when we were chatting offline that I would love to dive into that I think is really, really, really beneficial for people to hear this aspect of it is that social media, I'm like you, like when I started my first business, social media did not exist. (laughs) Like it was all through word of mouth. It was all through our church. And I'll never forget my little brother who was in college at the time who now owns a business. And he's like, there's this thing called Facebook, but you have to be in college, but you're too old and you're already graduated. And like, it's so cool. And then when they launched business, like if you were a business, you could get a page and he like helped me set it up. And then Twitter came out and then like all these things just started to evolve. And much like you, I mean, we're like, okay, let's dive into this. Let's learn it. Let's figure out like, you know, it must be something good. So we were always staying in front of everything. Um, but social media, you said earlier, it's like your business card and like you should have it. And when people it's like Facebook's like the second website if you go to Facebook or Instagram and people don't have it or if more importantly if they haven't posted in six months especially given what's going on in the world today is like are they still in business like are they still relevant so talk a little bit about that like what your experience has been just from you know the marketing angle the digital marketing angle having a strategy and like what has that, what does that mean to like you and your clients where, you know, social media is like your business card. Cause it's a great, it's a great way to think of it. Just yeah. if you'll dive into that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I wanted to say that like with, with social media and with what I did with bump club, at least for the first, probably five or six years, I don't think I realized what I was doing. Do, mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying? And I think yeah. that's a really important to point out because I just showed up and did it and, I, and, and I, it wasn't contrived and people truly grew to trust me and they would, I I still do get messages about parenting stuff all the time. And I think that that is something that is very important to share when it comes to content and social media, just be yourself. And, you know, I built a business off of being myself and I sold it for a lot of money. And like, I, I think, you know, all too often nowadays, people are making things very contrived and it should not be. And the more authentic you are, the money will come with time. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I realized what I was doing. And now looking back, I learned a lot. And there were a lot of things that I did that I'm now doing with my new business because I did it the first time around and I, and I know that it worked. But to your point about social media being your business card, this is something I tell all of my clients all the time is that you know, your Instagram grid, for example, like I am not a believer that your Instagram grid needs to be perfect and needs to, you know, have a pattern and like, no, no, I, you know, I think there is a way to have a theme that runs through it, you know, without being like, you know, something so perfect, like perfect. Like I said, I just, I don't believe that. But what I do believe in is that you have to show up all the time consistently and you have to share your knowledge because mm-hmm. if you're not sharing your knowledge and your expertise, then why is anyone going to 
click that link in your bio to get more information, to go to your website, to find out more, to hire you. And so, well, and I know we talked about this a little bit before we hopped on. So, well, I do believe that most of my transactions come from other places than social media. Social media is often an entry point where people find me first Mm -hmm. and then they get my email and then they listen to my podcast and then they reach out because they want to hire me. And so you need to have something in place. And I told you this earlier, like I was pitched something and I could not find the person on Instagram. And I said like, no, thank you. Because I didn't even know what they were all about. I couldn't find a trace of them anywhere. So yep. it doesn't matter the numbers. Those are pure vanity. Yep. It really just matters that you're showing up. People are engaging with you and that you're cultivating a community and a two-way street mm-hmm. with the people who are watching. And that's really you know, what is so important. Mm-hmm. When it comes to strategy, which is like one of my favorite words and people that I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of misconception out there that people think that they're like going to do, cause we'll batch all this stuff. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, we, during COVID, we were setting it up. We would do 20 videos a day, like short videos with people. We would do horizontal and vertical video, edit it, and then put it out. And they think they're going to go to bed and wake up and make a million dollars the next day. And it's like, no, that, I mean, it, it takes a strategy first off, and it takes consistency. And so we had a thing where it's like, we have to oversee it for 90 days to make sure it would work. And the other thing is, um, when we first started doing it, we were allowing clients to like, just give us their content. And then we would just kind of build it as we go. And um, something you said earlier is when you launched your podcast, you had 30 something under your belt, which is like the smartest thing to do, because once you kick it off, if you don't keep it up and you don't stay consistent, you're going to screw up your analytics. You're not building a community and they're going to go somewhere else. And then people get pissed off and they're like, well, those videos aren't working. (laughs) And it's like, well, that's because you're not getting it to us in time. So then, you know, we set, put our foot down and we're like, if we don't produce it all, and if we don't have it all up front, we're not launching jack shit because they don't understand. So that helped a little bit, but from a strategic standpoint, can you tell us what is like the most important thing to have a strategy for your content? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a couple of things that I, that I tell my clients and I share in my workshops, you know, When you're developing a content strategy, you have to remember that content isn't just social media, okay? Like content is everything you put out in the world. So it's how you share about yourself on podcasts. It's how you share about yourself in the press. It's how you share about yourself and your brand at live events, um, emails, your website, and social media. So it's that piece, right? And so I always tell my clients that they have to put the work in up front and really kind of build out how they are going to share things before they actually start sharing. And so, you know, one of the things that I, that I say first is always to develop your story. So I'm a big proponent in sharing your story, your why, you know, this is, this also includes where, how you got to where you got. Um, But most important, why is it that you're doing what you're doing right now? And I use my story and I weave that through my content across all of my platforms always. And it's something that I reshare over and over. And when things change, I make tweaks and change it. But I want people to get to know me and get to know my story and my why. And I want them to say, oh, that's the girl that sold her business and is now helping other people do the same. So you want to build yourself up as an expert in whatever it is you want to do and how you want people to feel and what you want them to achieve from what you're doing. So that's kind of the first thing that I always tell my clients to start with. And then Mm -hmm. the second thing I tell my clients to start with is to create content buckets. And and it's not just creating the content buckets. So I have an exercise, like one of the worksheets that I do and with all of my clients one-on-one and in my workshop is I have these content bucket sheets. So I make them pick four to six themes. And for the people who are listening that might not know what a content bucket is, it's the same thing as a content pillar. 
but it's really the four to six themes that you talk about through your content repeatedly over and over. And really every piece of content falls in those themes. One, it makes it so much easier for you to figure out what it is you're going to share. And two, it creates this level of expectancy from your community that they know what, what they're coming to you for. And so like, for example, one of my content buckets is my family. So, you know, and that's really kind of how I get personal with my community. So there's all different things that you can be sharing, but I have my favorite exercise is for each bucket to come out with how you're going to put these themes out into the world. So how, like, what is the execution? Are you going to make a reel? Are you going to make a carousel? Are you going to use a quote? Are you going to use a picture? Like, what is the how? And then what is the goal for each content bucket? And then what is your call to action? And in doing this, it helps you or your social media manager, if you're lucky enough to have one, to really follow a plan and a diagram when trying to think of what it is they're gonna, you're going to share. And then utilizing these buckets across all of your strategy, which I know we're going to get into in a little bit. But so yeah. that's, I mean, that's really like, I say that content is the backbone of everything that you do. And it's just like, it's, it's kind of the spoke in the middle that mm -hmm. holds everything together. Yep. It's so, and I love that because so when, when I talk about buckets, I talk about time buckets. And so, you know, we have the, the personal time and your client time when you're with your clients. And then you have your bucket of like the shit you have to do from the meetings or delegate it out to someone else or, or work with your team, which is another bucket, which your to-do list should go on your calendar and then your growth bucket, you know? So it's like we talk, but, but it helps people understand like, like, okay, if it doesn't fit into these buckets, the answer has to be no. And the thing is like, that's how the process that I had to understand from a consultant that taught me and then, you know, taking it and like teaching it to hospitality. It's, it's so powerful. It seems so basic. But well, but your buckets so can powerful. change over time. And I think that Absolutely. that's so important to say, because I think, you know, I'll have clients be like, well, it doesn't fit into my bucket. And I'm like, well, is this something you want to build into your plan? You can mm -hmm. always add a bucket, take away a bucket. You can, yep. you know, it just, you can change and that no one is stopping you from doing that. But I just, to your point, it just makes things so much easier. It does. It does. And yeah, I mean, we, I would say like updating it every year. And then also to the other interesting thing with just with social media in general is that, and like putting a strategy together is giving yourself the opportunity to be flexible based on what your audience is asking for. And also based on your analytics. Yes. So, and, and there's sometimes where like I get in these moods where I'm like, I just want to do what I want to do. I don't care if it performs well or not. Like it's just how it is. When I put out Apple tips or productivity tips, it does very well, but I get bored sometimes. So I'll batch those. And then like whatever trending dances are coming up on reels and like, you know, we'll put like, little motivational things and inspirational things in there. Um, but when you're, when you're new, when you're brand new at building an audience, you really can't do that. Right. <laughs> like you can't. And so something that I think that you've been just amazing at is building a community. And so if you could talk a little bit about the, the importance of being consistent and showing up and building that community. And then once you have a solid community, and by the way, you're making money from it. Because you said earlier, you know, a lot of people we work with, they're not making money from their content yet, or they, they're not in like the, the creator fund or anything like that. And, and y'all, it's not like you're making thousands and millions of dollars, unless you have an engaged community. That's a million plus, you don't need a million people in your community to make a million dollars. You right. really don't No, You know, I've seen that if you have about a hundred that are going to be part of your community, you can make a very nice living off of that, but you have to consistently show up. And so can you share with us a little bit about like how important it is, especially in the first year of business to like be consistent and keep your message simple because clarity sells and cute does not sell. And I learned that the hard way. Yes. So community is your number one asset that is like hands down they're going to become your best customers. They're going to be the ones that convert, but a community doesn't just happen overnight. Okay. And one of the biggest things that I tell my clients and the people in my workshop is 
social media is called social media for a reason. You have to be social. Okay. Yes. You can't just put something out there and expect that someone's going to engage with it. You need to ask questions. You need to have a call to action. You need to respond to comments. You need to like comments. You need to DM people. You need to proactively thank people for following your page. There are so many things that you can do to be social. And the more you do that, the more you see in return. And then your community grows because people share your stuff. And, and to your point about consistency, consistency isn't just showing up consistently, but it's sharing a consistent message. So that goes yes. back to your story and your content buckets. I share very similar things like over and over and over again, because someone who consumes something like in March on a Monday is not going to necessarily see it and consume it and engage with it in September on a Friday. And but the message is evergreen. And so you want to be sharing consistent messages as well, because you don't want people to think that you have all these different differences of, of opinion. And that's how you gain trust in people. And that's how you build authority in, in people start looking to you for answers on certain things. So it's not just being consistent and showing up every day. Like it's funny. I was on vacation last week and I didn't even realize that I didn't tell my community I was going on vacation. I was continuing to post, but I didn't show up once in my stories and I haven't. I need to go on today and do that and apologize, but it's okay. I have a, a community who knows me and who trusts me and I'm not just starting now. And, you know, and so it's okay, but it's showing up consistently with a consistent message. It, it's, it's so, so, so important. And again, like I learned it the hard way because like, well, this isn't working and this isn't working. And that's where the analytics piece comes in. And, and also too, when you have a consistent message, sometimes there is a better way to convey that message. And so not, so if something's not working or your, your analytics, like I was in a, a workshop the other day and the guy sitting next to me, he's like, I've done all this blogging. I've done all this shit for like a year. I did the YouTube videos. I do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, well, Howard, do you get on and answer your comments or you're, 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 you don't get on here. Like you post, but then there's no conversation back and forth. And, uh, he's like, oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to do like people really, they don't, I know. know. And it's funny know. because at Bump Club, like I was really on the Bump Club account, not necessarily on my own. My own was kind of just, I had it and it was there and, and whatnot. But, I, you know, and people, I would run into people and, and I would see people at events across the country and like, we legitimately thought they knew me. And it's fine that they did. And I'm glad that they did because that means I was doing my job. I was showing up, I was engaging, I was talking with them. And like, people would come out and meet me at my events across the country because I'd been messaging with them for two years and it was me, yeah. it was me who was answering, yeah. you know? So I, I just, it's so important to create that community and to create that space for not just, not just for them, but for you, because yeah. when you have a community you can rely on, you can also ask them questions. You can do market research. You can ask them to share for you and guess what they will especially if they're a client and you've helped them do something, they're the biggest advocates for you. Yes. And if you help them work through some of their shit that you've already been through, they want others to succeed. Yes. Generally, you know, yes. so it, it's just, it, it's daunting to me that people think that they're going to post one or two things. And then, you know, I think, what the media, what they forget to really tell people is that like, um, you know, if one video goes viral on TikTok and then it like changes your life overnight. Yes. I've, I've said, we, we have a few clients that, that we work with who that legitimately did happen. However, what the media forgets to tell you is they've been on that platform for seven or eight years. They've been making videos for seven or eight years. They've been posting, they've, they've been doing these things it's highly unlikely that you're, you don't have any type of presence and you're going to have one video go viral right. and it's going to change your life. Like it's not that easy. Right. <laughs> it's just 
not. No, it's not. not. And you know, one of the things that I, that you just said also, you said about like content creators, um, you know, you said that a lot of people, what I said earlier, which is a lot of people don't, aren't making money directly off being content creators. And that's the truth. Like most of my clients are in another space, but they need their content in order to draw awareness and they need to bring, you know, bring themselves out and connect with people. Because at the end of the day, we all know that people are not buying from brands they're buying from people. So you need to be out there. Right. But a lot of my clients often say to me, but like, Oh God, the content creation process is like so daunting. And it's like, just so tiring. And I feel like I'm on this hamster wheel over and over. And what I end up telling them is that they need to be very consistent in terms of creating a piece of content and then using that piece of content, just like what I just said about being consistent with your messaging. Do you know how many things you can do with one piece of content? Like over, I mean, I have over 30 in a checklist that I think I gave you, but like, I, I mean, I use one blog post and I put it everywhere Mm -hmm. in different ways. I make reels, I make videos, I put it on YouTube. I put it in email. I put it on Instagram. I make carousels. I mean, it's like, it can serve you for months, one piece of content. And so that is the habit that I'm always trying to instill in any of my clients and any of my students. It becomes second nature, the more you do it. But you have to, like, you can't just get on this like train of like creating content and putting it out to your point and not doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. You have to just reuse it over and over, pull quotes from it. There's so many ways that you can use content so that you're not creating content, new content over and over and over and over again. And guess what? That one piece of content in six months you can go back and you can pull other things from it and use mm-hmm. it again. You can repost it and make updates to it. And that way you're focusing on your expertise and your clients or whatever it is that you're doing to actually generate revenue versus this brand awareness play. Mm-hmm. That That's the whole, like, I'm always like, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. We're like, what does that mean? And I'm like, exactly to your point, you, you can reuse it and wash, rinse, repeat it. Even um, like my brother recently, who his company is about three years old, but when he started it, you know, I hammered in, like, we're going to have a strategy and these are the things you're going to do. He has a PI company, security company. So they do events, but then, you know, they also, um, I mean, we live in Nashville. So there's a lot of people in music. And so they, you know, guard a few, a a lot of different people for shows and things like that. But he constantly is putting out whatever is trending. And so having a strategy for a blog to put out snippets on social media, to send people back to your blog is essentially free SEO search engine optimization. And so he, the other day, um, you know, I teach Apple, like all Apple products, how to sync, how to be more productive and everything they put out, we pretty much get their products. And so when their air tags came out, which they've been out for a couple of years now, um, you know, it tracks, it's, it's great, but yeah. they're just now in the media starting to pop up where, uh, people are putting these little air tags behind license plates. And then exactly. people are, uh, like, like creeper, like crazy mm-hmm. people are tracking people. And so it, it was like a national media thing. And so he did a blog on it because it was a trending thing. And then again, having a strategy on the back end so that when you post these blogs, like using the correct hashtags, you can't just freaking copy and paste every day. Like no. you have to keep up. And so that's where having a little strategic piece, you don't have to, you don't have to be a, an expert strategist, but he knew I'm like, okay, 10 keywords that need to go into the back end. And so a reporter had been looking for somebody to interview, like in the PR world about air tags and safety and all this stuff and following people. And he got on this huge show because of that blog, because they Googled it and searched it. Yeah. So yesterday he's like, Ange, thank you so much for like, you know, like I'm like a mom too, you know, he, he's seven years younger than me. And it's just like, keep doing what you're doing, but he's been doing this for three years, but, right. and they've had some like local small media stuff, but like, this was a really big deal. And, um, I'm like, can you just, uh, say that on video right here <laughs> so, that can, so that I could let other people know that it works and it, it's a nurturing process. Like 
doesn't it's a to total happen. nurturing process. And like, you, and you have to just keep at it. And, and, you know, it's funny when I set up, like, I was just saying how I, like when I'll start with a blog post and then I'll post it in a million different ways and a lot of different places. And, you know, I'll point back to my website, but sometimes I'll point to other places. It just kind of depends what my call to action is. But what I'll do is in that moment, I will take that blog post and set up a couple of tweets and maybe a couple of things for like six months down the road, just so it gets out again. And then it's one Mm -hmm. last thing I have to worry about six months down the road. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the stuff, a lot of the stuff that I'm sharing is not timely. And if things do change from a trend perspective or a technicality perspective, I can very easily hop in and update it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just, you have to stay on top of things and like, I don't watch the news. I don't watch TV. I don't have TV. All my TVs are editing screens. And so, but what I do is I do have people around me on my team that are aware of like things that are happening in the world. And there have been a few times over the years where we scheduled a bunch of stuff or we batched a bunch of stuff. I mean, shit, when COVID happened, we had batched, we batched content for the whole freaking year. And, and we had to unschedule a bunch right. of things. And I'm just like, that kind of taught me it's good to work ahead, but now we do 90 days ahead instead of a year ahead, because you can't just automate everything, set it, forget it and go. It doesn't right. work like that. Mm-mm. It just, it, it doesn't. So it, how do you handle people or clients that are just uncomfortable? Because one of the major things, and I agree with you wholeheartedly is it's you and your story. People buy from people they love, I can trust. And there's people that are very uncomfortable, um, even in pictures and, and showing up, but they need to, and they own a business. Is there something that you do for people to help them understand, like you're important, your story is important. You may not think it's important. I mean, some of the stupidest things that I'm like, this is just freaking common sense. It's not. And the knowledge that you have, like you said, if you're not sharing it or you think you dismiss it because it's like, oh, everybody knows that. No, not everybody does know that. But how do you have any pointers for people who just don't aren't comfortable? Yeah. So I think that one, you have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. You have to. Okay. Like, I mean, that's business 101. You're not going to be comfortable doing everything. And there's always like my discomfort is finance and, and numbers. Okay. And I'm very open and honest about that. And it takes me a lot longer and, and I have people who help me, but you know, that's my, my horrible discomfort. But, um, I have a client, I, I have a client that I actually just wrapped up a project with who her name was on is the brand. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a CPG and her name is the brand. And she right out said to me, like, I'm not the marketer. I'm more operations and finance and like the product design. And I'm just not comfortable. And I said, well, we're going to have to get you comfortable. And so I worked with her, you know, we, I had her on my podcast. So that was like one of the things that we did for practice. I did a video before the podcast, I did a video and and I told her we were going to use it. We, We didn't use it, but I just did a video with her to get her talking, to get her to tell her story because I wanted her to practice before she came on the podcast. And now she has the podcast to use as a marketing tool, right? Mm-hmm. I worked with her social media manager on setting up prompts for her so that we can capture her on video responding to prompts, which I think is a good thing too. Like you don't want someone to come off reading, you know, right. and, and, yeah. and that's the other thing too, is that I, I very much want to point out and say, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Like really and truly, it does not have to be perfect. And I can't stand when I'm on Instagram and I can tell that someone's reading like a prompt. Like, I I don't, I don't want to watch that. And usually I unfollow them. Yeah. Just show up and speak your mind, even if it's for 30 seconds. And then the other thing that I, that I tell clients and I told this client, and I actually just shared this in my workshop the other day is that just practice, like start small, you know, hop on your stories. Cause they're not live hop on your stories do 30 seconds, just share a little bit, introduce yourself, start with your story. Okay. Like share it in a video, share it in a live, Mm -hmm. share it in a reel, start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And the more you do it, the better you will get at it. It's funny. A lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but it is the God's honest truth. 
when I, so when I was at Bump Club, I always went in our stories. I mean, like I was in our stories all the time. I did videos, I did reels, like everything. And it wasn't a big deal. We had this big following. I was the face of the company. It was my company. I founded it. When I left Bump Club and I came back over to my own Instagram, I was kind of like, shit, like, oh my God, like I, I, I've like neglected this Instagram account. I need to really, I, and I had to do a changeover and you can see in my grid where I changed it because I put my new logo like right across so you can see it. And there's a big change. The first time I went live and the first time I went in the stories of my personal Instagram, I was petrified. Oh, because no. it was like my family and friends and like, yes, it was strangers too, but like, it's a whole different thing. I wasn't using that account for that. And now mm -hmm. it is second nature. It's been six, not even six months. And it's second nature for me to just go. It, it just takes time. And to your point, it's the rinse, wash, repeat, wash, mm -hmm. rinse, repeat, right? You just have to keep doing it. Yeah. 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 I mean, and again, if, if you own a business, you got to start somewhere. You started your business. So why not share what you're doing over and over and over? I mean, the conversation's a little bit different, you know, on each platform. And also, too, one last question. You don't have to be on every single platform. Mm -hmm. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that? Like, if, and I try to tell you, like, if you're new, like, pick one where you think your audience is how um, important is it to just have one and grow a community in one versus like trying to diversify across all the platforms? So usually what I, what I teach and what I tell my clients is to pick two actually. And I, and okay. I do that because I want them to see the difference and I want them yeah. to see the difference in how they put out the content places and I, and how people are receiving it. Because for example, I spent three months coaching a client recently and we launched her entire brand. Like it was nothing. And now she has like all these clients she can't keep up. It's like her side hustle. And, and like, it, hopefully she'll be able to quit her job soon. But, you know, and I had told, she picked Instagram and LinkedIn and she does put stuff on Instagram because to what we were saying before, it's her business card but she is getting way more interaction and engagement from LinkedIn. So like if she didn't put it out there, she wouldn't know necessarily. So I think it's important to pick two. Mm -hmm. um, I also think it's okay to like repurpose what you're putting on Instagram. Like I, right now, I don't have the bandwidth of a whole team. So my Instagram posts, most of them go onto my Lindsay Pinchuk Facebook page. They just automatically get posted so that there's yep. something there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so I think it's important that you just show up consistently in that one or two places. And as you do, and as you grow, you can start gradually adding, you don't have to go full force into TikTok. Like I've dabbled and I'm trying, but I also realize I only have the bandwidth for certain things right now. Yep. And that's okay. You do not have to be everywhere, but I do want to say that the more you share your story over and over and over again, the more people will share it for you. Yeah. And it's is so when true. people learn about your story and your why and what you're doing, I mean, people share my story and tag me all the time now. It's like the most, it's the most amazing thing because it's the most amazing thing to see what you preach mm -hmm. come to fruition. And, you know, and I did change my story in a big way in the last six months and people are sharing it everywhere. And it's, it's amazing, but I am sharing it. And if I wasn't mm -hmm. showing up and talking about it on LinkedIn and on Instagram and on Facebook, no one else would be sharing it. And if you leave gaps in your story, people make shit up. Yeah. So that's another thing in this story. This is where I'm like, I hired, you know, a professional to like help craft some things because the things that you might think is important may not resonate with people. But like you said, just, just be yourself, mm -hmm. show up. And then the other thing that some people will say is like, oh, you know, if they get a troll or a negative comment, I'm like, that's good. People are paying attention. Mm -hmm. Like I don't delete those. I no. tell them I'll pray for them. And I genuinely mean it because typically they're hiding behind a screen mm -hmm. and they're unhappy. You can't please everyone. No, you can't. And you're not for everybody. So and you know what, if you piss someone else off to your point, you've made an impact, move on and that's it. And you're not for them and that's fine. They're not for you either. Yep. 
And you can't not put your stuff out there because you're afraid of that, right. uh, of the unknown. It's like you, you, you got to take a risk, which starting a business is taking a risk. Yeah. So this was awesome. I could talk to you forever, but this was so much fun. Thank you for we, having me. Of course. If people want to connect with you, should they go to Insta? What's your favorite? Yeah, so if, if you want to find me, go to lindsaypinchuk.com. It's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-P-I-N-C-H-U-K.com. Everything's there. My social media handles are all at Lindsay Pinchuk. And you can find me on my podcast at Dear Found Her. Um, that's wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find me. And we'll, we'll put all the links in the show notes so you guys can connect. And just again, thank you. This was just a wealth of information. This was amazing. Thank you so much. And everybody that's listening and watching, thank you so much for your time and be sure to tune in next week to another episode of Business Unveiled. Bye y'all. That's it for this week's episode of Business Unveiled. Now that you have all the tools that you need to conquer the world and GSD, get shit done, would you share this with your friends and fellow business leaders? One thing that would really, really help us and help new listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a comment in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in and listen to Business Unveiled. You can check out the show notes at angelaprofit.com slash podcast and link up with us on social media so you can share your biggest insights and I want to know your aha moments. Until next week, remember the profitable shifts and structures you're creating in your business help you be more present in your life. So get out there and GSD.